Good evening. Relatives of MH17 victims have begun the heartbreaking journey to bring them home. This afternoon, the parents of 24-year-old Fatima Tachinsky left Perth on a Malaysia Airlines flight. Emma Sheridan was there at the airport. Emma, what did they tell you? Well, Tim, Fatima's parents, Angela and George, boarded a flight late this afternoon bound for Malaysia. It's believed from there they'll fly on to Amsterdam to bring their little girl home. Now, 24-year-old Fatima Duchensky was on the ill-fated flight MH17 on the way back to Perth to start a new life. She was a talented astronautical engineer. Today, her distraught parents spoke of the unimaginable heartbreak and loss and how tough this journey will be. It's one of the most important trips we do together in our life. Malaysia Airlines says it's continuing to support the families of the MH17 disaster by providing accommodation, transport as well as financial assistance. Tim. Emma, thank you. And a short time ago in Ukraine, coffins containing the bodies of 50 victims were readied for the flight to Amsterdam. Farewelling them, the Australian government's lead man on the ground, retired Defence Chief Angus Houston. Harkov Airport and coffins containing the victims of MH17 are readied for the flight to Amsterdam on a Dutch Hercules. We want to do the um, identification process right. We want to return the victims home to their loved ones as quickly as possible. The first trip will take 50 bodies, farewelling them dignitaries from around the world. Some formality and dignity at last. The bodies arrived after a train trip from the crash site. As the train rolled into Kharkov, expectation rose. Most of the victims were on the way to be identified. The rebels told Ukrainian officials 282 bodies had been located. In fact, the real number was way short of that. What we are sure of, absolutely sure of, that the bodies in the trains this moment here in this city are the remains of 200 persons. It means the remains of another 98 victims have yet to be found. And as long as it's possible that there are any Australian remains out there, we owe it to the families to do our utmost, to do our absolute utmost to recover them. After five days, this is a first for this tragedy. We actually have on the ground people who know what they're doing. They're air crash investigators and they're from Malaysia. The problem is that locals have beaten them to it. Observers fear the rebels have removed critical sections of the wreckage. The other day when we were at the cockpit section, when we were leaving, we did see workers using a diesel-powered saw to uh, get a closer look at the fuselage. The black boxes, thankfully, are in safe hands and are on their way to Britain for analysis. The people who probably have the really valuable information about what happened to this flight are indeed the Russians themselves and they should release what they know. Convinced Russia had a hand in the downing of MH17, European Union foreign ministers want to whack Moscow with sanctions. In Ukraine, the country is at war with the Russian-backed rebels and it seems with itself. In Kiev, MPs traded punches as they argued about what to do with the separatists in the east. In the fields, at the crash site, a call was for peace, not war. A simple ceremony to remember the strangers who died on their doorstep and still have a way to go before they reach home soil. In eastern Ukraine, Damien Ryan, Nine News. And the Perth parents of little Mo, Evie and Otis have just released a statement. The Maslin family also lost the children's grandfather, Nick Norris. In their statement, they say, it's a message to the soldiers in the Ukraine, the politicians, the media, our friends and family. Our pain is intense and relentless. We live in a hell beyond hell. Our babies are not here with us. We need to live with this act of horror every day and every moment for the rest of our lives. No one deserves what we are going through. Not even the people who shot our whole family out of the sky. No hate in the world is as strong as the love we have for our children, for Mo, for Evie, for Otis. No hate is in, the, in the world is as strong as the love we have for Grandad Nick. No hate in the world is as strong as the love we have for each other. This is a revelation that gives us some comfort. We would ask everyone to remember this when you are making any decisions that affect us and the other victims of this horror. So far, 
Every moment since we have arrived home, we've been surrounded by family and friends. We desperately pray that this continues because this expression of love is what is keeping us alive. We want to continue to know about your lives, all the good and all the bad. We no longer have lives that we want to live by ourselves, so we'd like to take the chance to thank everyone, all our incredible friends, family and communities, and to tell you that we love you very much.